Shalom, Shalom, Mishpaka. Buka Tug to you worldwide. Good morning to you worldwide. Good morning to the whole Bayith, the whole house of Yasha all. I give esteem to the older brother on this Yom, Yahuda. I give esteem to the younger brother, Ephraim, or Ephraim on this yarn. I give esteem to the former girl, the former stranger, a former goy, a former former Gentile who indeed is no longer a Gentile, who is no longer a stranger, but indeed now is a fellow citizen an adopted son, and indeed a co-heir to the same promise, the same covenants, and the same inheritance that was given to Yasha all and to Yasha all alone. Indeed, Zion, this is our purpose. This is the purpose of the sons of Yahakob. This is the purpose of of the children of Yasha all. And that is Zion to be Kohim. You see, we have been ordained to be Kohim. It is written that when Aha Raum and his sons were ordained to be Kohim, uh, that they were indeed washed. They had to be washed. And they had to be anointed. And likewise, that had, there had to be a sin offering. The blood had to be sprinkled. And the blood had to be sprinkled on their garments. And the blood had to be applied to their right ear, their right thumb, and their right big toe. Indeed, Zion, uh, we too have been ordained by the washing the washing of the word and the washing of the mikvah tabalah, the immersion in the set-apart name of Yahusha. Indeed, Zion, we have been anointed, provided that you have been born from above and that you have received the anointing of the Ruach HaKadosh, because in thee, the physical anointing that the uh, Kohim in the order of um, Aha Raum received the physical anointing, the oil that was applied to them. Indeed, there were uh, specific components, specific ingredients that were added to this oil so that it had a, a specific scent, that it had a specific odor. And it was, it is written in the Torah that these. Uh, very same ingredients that the exact ingredients that went into that oil could never be repeated. Could never be repeated. Why? Because this is the exact scent of the Ruach HaKadosh. This is the exact scent of the Most High, Yah. So indeed, the physical anointing was a representation of of the Ruach anointing, the Ruach-like anointing that we receive when the Ruach of the Most High comes upon us, provided that you have been born from above. So they were washed and they were anointed and a offering took place. Indeed, an offering has taken place for us. The body of the offering of the Hamashiach. The body of the offering of the Hamashiach, whose blood has been applied to our right ear, our right thumb, and our right toe, whose blood has been applied to our nefash, to our conscious. So indeed, Zion, we have been ordained because it is written that we are a nation of Kohim. We are a royal Kihuna in the order of Melchizedek, not born, not uh not coming from the loins of Aha Raun, but coming from the very loins of the Most High Yah. We are Kohen and we have been ordained to be Kohen. 
in the order of Melchizedek. And so as Kohim, we are scattered amongst the nations. I need you to hear me. As Kohim, we are scattered amongst the nations, Zion, to reconcile the rest of the sons of Adam, to reconcile the rest of mankind, Adam, back to the Most High. Yah, this is our purpose. This is why we are chosen. We are not special in any other regard. Yahuwah created one flesh of man. He created Adam. He created one flesh of mankind. And he loves all of his children. Now, is all of mankind going to be reconciled? By no means all mankind is going to be reconciled. First of all, and all mankind are not even men. Not in the sense that we think. And some of them indeed are seed of Cain, are seed of the wicked one. But that's neither here nor there. But those who are of the seed of Adam, who are of the seed of Ashaif, Seth, we have been scattered amongst the nations, hear me, to reconcile the rest of the seed of Adam, the rest of the seed of Shaif, back to the Most High Yah. This is our purpose. This is our purpose. This is our purpose. So Yasha all, whether or not you are Yahuda, or whether or not you are Ephraim or Ephraim, or whether or not you are the rest of the seed of Adam, the seed of Shaif, the stranger, the Gur, the Goyim, the Gentile, whether or not you are him who has been adopted into the house of Yashar all, whereby you too are now a firstborn son. It's irrespective of who you are in the house of Yahov, irrespective of who you are, I give esteem to you. I give esteem to you on this yom. I give esteem to you to the four corners of the earth, the four corners of the heads. I give esteem to you on this preparation. Yah. Shalom. Shalom to you worldwide on this yah. Mishpaka, I stopped by to ask a question today and to call some introspective thought and to prayerfully and expectantly um, give you some encouragement. To give you some encouragement. But the question I have, the question Yah has is. Uh, how is the, how fertile, how fertile is the soil of your heart? How fertile is the soil of your heart? Indeed, indeed, indeed. This is a very important question. Uh, this is a very important consideration to consider. How fertile is the soil of your heart? Indeed, indeed, even when planting in the physical, uh, before one can plant, one must test the soil. The soil uh, must be capable of uh, producing life. It must be capable of growing plants. Uh, you see, there, there, there must be a certain composition uh, in the soil, that there must be a, uh, a, a balanced chemical level in the soil in order for anything to grow in it, in order for it to produce plant life. Uh, it, 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 it has to be at a certain balanced level. Uh, the pH levels that have to be within norms. Uh, the, uh, the chemical balance has to be within norm in order for the soil to be fertile. 
in order for the soil to be fertile. Again, in the physical, in the secular, uh, in, and I'm reading here, uh, testing the pH levels of your soil, how to test your soil uh, uh, for dummies. And I indeed I am a dummy. Um, yes, I indeed, I indeed am a dummy. I know nothing. Everything that I know, everything that I claim to know comes from Yahuwah. I'm incapable of even generating or producing independent thought. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm nothing but a clay vessel. I, you know, I'm dirt. Do you, do you hear me? We, we are dirt. We, we are dirt. And so we are soil. Do you hear me? We are soil. And so as soil, uh, our soil has to contain the right levels of chemicals and pH levels and so forth and so on in order for the seed to grow. It, the, the soil has to be fertile in order, in order for the seed to grow. It reads here in testing your soil for dummies, and again, I'm a dummy, you know. Uh, I, I know nothing. Everything I know, everything I claim to know, it comes from above. It comes from Yahuwah. But it says here, too much of this nutrient, and we're talking about pH levels, too much of this nutrient or too little of that, and you have problems. It says, just as humans, hear me, need the right balance of nutrients, indeed, you need the right balance of nutrients in order for the seed to grow. Are you hearing me? Just as humans need the right balance of nutrients for good health, so do plants. For example, when tomatoes grow in soil that's deficient in calcium, they develop blossom in rot. Sometimes too much of a nutrient is detrimental. Excessive nitrogen causes lots of leaf growth, such as, uh, such as clement, clematis, clem, clematis or uh, peppers, but few flowers or fruits. Fruits, operative word here is fruit. Fruit. The right pH enables, enables plants to use nutrients from the soil. The right pH, in other words, the right balance of pH, the right balance of chemicals, enables plants to use to use nutrients from the soil. Soil is rated on a pH scale with a pH of 1 being most acidic and a pH of 14 being most alkaline. If your soil's pH isn't within a suitable range, plants can't take up nutrients like phosphorus and potassium, even if they're present in the soil in high amounts. On the other hand, if the pH is too low, the the solubility of certain minerals such as manganese may increase to toxic levels to toxic toxic levels and it, it goes on and, t and shows us how to test the soil to ensure that you have the right amount of ph uh, levels in the soil but we're, we're not going to read that i think you get the point that um the fertility or the pH level of the soil must be tested and it must have the right amount of pH levels in the soil before anything can grow in it. Before anything can grow in it. So I repeat the level. How fertile is the soil of your heart? Have you tested the soil? Have you tested the pH levels in your soil? Uh, is it conducive to growing life? Is it conducive to uh, producing fruit? Is it conducive? Have you counted up the cost? Have you counted up the cost? Have you considered the cost. Have you considered how expensive this walk is? And have you balanced your proverbial budget to this to determine in order to determine if whether or not this walk is something that you can begin? 
uh, if it is something in thee that uh, you can continue? Is it if it is indeed uh, something that you can complete? Have you counted up the cost? Have you tested the pH levels in your soil? Have you tested the pH levels in your soil? And indeed, uh, this is, it is a continual process. You need to test the pH levels in your soil each year. Each year, you, you need to test the pH levels. Uh, again, uh, akin to the, this soil. The soil of our hearts. Indeed, we are made from soil. We are dirt. So, indeed, in testing this soil, a consistent and constant introspective inventory or an introspective test of this soil needs to be conducted in order to ensure that this soil is conducive to producing life and by extension producing fruit it must be tested it must be tested and picking up this thought we turn to the book of Matif Yahu or Matthew the 13th chapter beginning at verse 1 reading through verse 23 a very familiar passage of scripture with regards to the parable of the sower uh, but in picking up this thought, we begin reading in verse 1, and it reads, And on that day, Yahushua went out of the house and sat by the sea. And large crowds were gathered together to him, so that he went into a boat and sat down. And all the crowds stood on the beach. And he spoke to them much in parables, saying, See, the sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some indeed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. And others fell on rocky places where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered. And others fell among thorns. And the thorns came up and choked them, and others fell on good soil and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the taught ones came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answering said to them, because it has been given to you, hear me, because it has been given to you to know the secrets of the reign of the Shamayim, but to them it has not been given. For whoever possesses to him more shall be given, and he shall have overflowingly but, and he shall have overflowingly. But whoever does not possess even what he possesses shall be taken away from him. What is he talking about here? What is he talking about here? To you, it has been given to know the secrets of the reign of the Shamayim. What are the secrets of the reign of the Shamayim? What are these secrets, Zion? What are these secrets? And why has it been given to some, but to others, it is not being given? But he goes on to say, for whoever possesses, to him more shall be given. And he shall have overflowingly, but, who, but whoever does not possess, even what he possesses, shall be taken away from him. So let's explore what he's talking about here. Because of this, I speak to them in parables. Because seeing, they do not see. And hearing, they do not hear. 
nor do they understand. And in them, the Nabuah, what the world calls prophecy of Yasha Yahu, commonly called Isaiah, is completely filled, which says, Hearing you shall hear, and by no means understand, and seeing you shall see, and by no means perceive. For the heart of this people has become thickened, it's not conducive for the seed. It's not conducive for the seed. The soil is diseased. The soil, the, it does not have the right pH level. The soil is diseased. The soil needs to be tested. For the heart of this people has become thickened, and their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand. Stand. The operative word is understand with their heart and turn back and I heal them. So in terms of possessing, in terms of possessing, and we understand and we're going to, the word of Yah is going to clear this up, but I, I, I'll give you a nugget if you don't already know, but the seed is the word of Yah. The seed is the word of Yah. And in terms of possessing, we are now talking about talking about understanding, understanding, understanding the word of Yah. It says that to some understanding has been given, but to some understanding has not been given. Why is understanding given to some and why is uh why isn't understanding given to others? He goes on to say that uh, to he who possesses understanding, understanding of the word, more understanding is going to be given. And to him who does not possess understanding, to him, even, even the understanding that he thinks he has is going to be taken away. Why? Why is that understanding going to be taken away for some? And the psalm, that understanding is going to be increased. Why? Why is that understanding going to be increased in some? I mean, and, and, and we see this, Sion. This is very prevalent in our society with some who perceive that they have understanding, yet they don't. Yet they don't. What, what they have is uh, a vessel full of misunderstanding, but they don't have true understanding. But they don't have true understanding. Why is that? Why is that? Why don't they have true understanding? And why uh, will they uh, fight tooth and nail against true understanding? That they would rather hold on to the misunderstanding uh, rather than grasp a true understanding. Why? Why is there a difference? Why do some possess understanding and some why do some not? He goes on to say here, you then hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the rain and hear me and does not understand it, whenever someone hears the word of the rain, the word, the word, <laughs> this is the seed and does not understand it again to him who possesses understanding him to him will be given more to him who does not possess understanding even what he thinks he has will be taken away why is understanding important because if you and and, and why is is hearing correctly important hearing the word of yah correctly important because if you hear the word correctly then you will understand the word of Yah correctly. Then you will in turn produce the right kind of fruit and or the right kind of obedience. You will produce the right kind of fruit, the right kind of obedience. If you hear correctly, you understand correctly, you're going to obey, you're going to obey correctly and thus you're going to produce the right kind of fruit. If you hear incorrectly, and you understand incorrectly, 
then you are going to produce the wrong kind of fruit. You are going to produce the wrong kind of obedience. Obedience and fruit are synonymous. Obedience and fruit are synonymous. They are indeed the same thing. If you are hearing incorrectly and understanding incorrectly, then you're going to produce the wrong kind of obedience and the, in, the incorrect kind of obedience, incorrect obedience and incorrect fruit. An incorrect fruit. Indeed, you're going to be an orange tree producing lemons. An orange tree producing lemons as opposed to a fig tree producing figs. Do you hear me? You're merely going to be an orange tree producing lemons and not a fig tree producing figs. You're going to be producing the wrong kind of fruit because you've received the wrong kind of understanding. And the word says that what's going to happen is you're going to keep on producing the wrong kind of fruit. And even what you're producing, he's going to take that away. He's going to take that away until you're a babbling idiot, until you've been given over to a reprobate mind. Until you've been given over to a rap reprobate mind. Nevertheless, it says here, when anyone hears the word of the rain and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. When anyone hears the word of the rain and does not understand it this is why your soil has to be conducive hear me to receiving the engrafted word to receiving the seed it has to be uh it has to be fertile soil it must be fertile soil it must contain the right balance of nutrients it must contain the right pH level. It must be conducive, hear me, to growing plant, plant life and, uh, and furthermore, uh, receiving a yield, a crop from that which was from that which was planted. If the soil does not have the right level of pH level, if it does ha doesn't have the right amount of nutrients, the word of Yah says, when anyone hears the word of the rain and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart, in the soil of the heart. That this is what this is what that sown by the wayside and that sown on rocky places. This is he who hears the word and immediately feels, receives it with Simca. How many folk you know that? They, they find out who they are. They find out that they are seed of Yaakov. Or, you know, when we were in the Christian Circe and they, you know, come up to the altar call and, you know, they uh, confess their sins and they're crying and snot. It's coming from their noses, you know, and they're laying out prostrate. Uh, before that indoor pagan altar and and you know some preacher tells them that they're forgiven you know even though they leave directly from the church and and will eat a pig foot and a pig ear and a catfish sandwich and a shrimp po' boy uh, uh, yet they are you know you're good you're good and they leave there with Simca in their heart they're with, with Simca they're excited about this truth you know the sons of Yaakov waking up and they're excited about this truth but that's the only thing that they're excited about it's the only thing they're excited about you see they're not really excited about serving the most high god they're really not excited about being set apart to him in righteousness and in truth they're really not excited about oh wow man i am a son of yakob abba i want to grow closer to you i want to know what it is to be a son of abraham and I want to walk before you in purity and in truth and in set apartness. I want to know my purpose, Abba. I want your rock to fill me. I, I, I want to do your will. Teach me to do your will. Teach me your ways. Teach me to number your days. Instead of this, they're more excited about being a son of Yaakov. 
They're more excited about being a son of Yaakov, just being a son of Yaakov, as if that is enough. When Yahusha clearly states, when he's talking to a Yahudim, when he's talking to Nakhdamon, that verily, verily, I say unto you that unless one is born from above, that he will by no means enter into the reign of Shamayim. So the, the genealogy isn't enough. I mean, that's, that's good that you now understand who you are. But now you must be born from above. And now you must be... You must undergo the mikbah tabalah. You must undergo the washing, the mikbah tabalah in the set apart name of Yahusha. Why? Because you got some filth on you. You you got some some dirt on you. You got some. Whoo! You 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 got some menstrual cycle. Do you hear me? You got some leprosy on you. You've been touching dead stuff. You've been touching the dead things of Babylon. You, you got running sores. And until <clears throat> there is an offering made, until you receive the offering of the body of the Hamashiach, and until you are washed, immersed in his set-apart name, whereby being washed from these things, you can't come into the camp. You are still outside of the camp and you cannot come inside of the camp. You can't come in. I don't care who you are. Yahuda, Ephraim, Ephraim, I don't care who you are. Until you are washed, you are still filthy. And you can't come in. You can't come into the camp. You have to be separated because see, you, you can't contaminate the camp. You can't contaminate the camp with your disease, with your sin, with your leprosy, with your running sores, with touching dead things. Uh, you, you can't come into the camp. You can't until you are cleansed from those diseases, until the Kohen Gadol pronounces you clean. And the only Kohen Gadol that can pronounce you clean is our Kohen Gadol in the order of Mechazadev Yahusha HaMashiach. He must pronounce you clean. He must pronounce you clean. You got to come out to him outside of the camp where he was executed, receive the offering of the body of the HaMashiach and be immersed in his set-apart name. Be immersed in his set-apart name and then have him declare you clean. I don't care who you are. Whether you are Ephraim or Yahuda or a stranger, there is one day let. There is one door by which we all must enter. And anyone entering any other door is a liar, is a thief and a robber. Is a thief and a robber. Nevertheless, it reads, and that is sown by the wayside and that is sown on rocky places. That is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with Simcha. Yet he has no root in himself. He has no root. What is that root? We're going to find out. We're going to find out what that root is. And we're going to find out what the right pH level of the soil is. Yet he has no root in himself. But it's short-lived. And when pressure or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Immediately he stumbles. You see, Christianity has many thinking that because you come into fellowship with the Most High, that um, you ain't going to get persecution, that, you know, your life is going to be fantastic. You know, you're going to get the white, the house with the white picket fence. You know, you're going to get the nice car. You're going to have the nice shoes, nice suits. You're going to have the nice wife, a nice husband. You know, you're going to have uh, decent children. They're going to be obedient. They're going to do well in school. You know, and Christianity teaches if you don't have these things, then you're doing something wrong. Then you're doing something wrong. So Christianity paints this fairy tale picture of what the walk is, of what the walk is like, you know, when the son of man says that, said that he, he you know, the, the birds have nests and foxes have holes, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. <laughs> but you uh, in, in Christianity are, are, are taught, especially in the prosperity teachings, that, uh, that this, is supposed, this is supposed to be yours. You know, they even made songs about let's get back to Eden. Uh, when it is clear through scripture that Eden or Adon is not going to be restored until the new Jerusalem comes down. But but you can have Eden or Adon right now. In Christianity, you can have it right now. And so uh, immediately when persecution comes because of the word, some stumble. They, some, they, they, they stumble. 
they stumble. You know, I, I just left in esteem to Yahuwah, and because of the prayers of the righteous that prayed for me, uh, I, I just came out of a dry place. I was in a very dry place. I, it was like I was in a valley of dry bones. I hear me. I was in a dry place. I need you to understand that I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I have, <clears throat> I have faults that I fight against on a daily basis, and sometimes they overcome me. I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. And, and sometimes they overcome me. And uh, uh, you know, many times I'm tested. Many times I'm tested on a daily basis. I'm tested to to test what to test my heart to see if whether or not I will obey the, obey the Most High Yah, to see if whether or not I will let go of the plow, to see if whether or not I will turn to the left or the right, to test to see what is in my heart. I am tested on a daily basis. And I am not perfect. I am not perfect. Sometimes I stumble. Do you hear me? Sometimes I stumble. But see, it is not, <clears throat> it is not perfection that Yahuwah is looking for. What he is looking for is a perfect heart. His eyes look to and fro for a heart that's perfect towards him. What does that mean to have a perfect heart? A perfect heart does not mean that you are perfect. A perfect heart means that you have a right conscience towards him. That you have a right conscience towards the Most High Yah. So that when you stumble and the Ruach HaKadosh comes to you and convicts you, that you will come go somewhere in a quiet place and wet his feet with your tears. And dry his feet with your hair because you're so torn up. Because you are so you have a, a righteous sorrow. You are so torn up that you have stumbled, that you have fallen, that you have uh, done something displeasing to him. You see, this is what he looks for. His eyes go to and fro, fro for a heart that's perfect towards him. Not someone that's perfect because we are not perfect. If we are perfect, then a perfect offering would have not would have not been needed for us. If we are perfect, then uh, Yahuwah would not have to be our righteousness as he is Yahuwah Zedekinu, Yahuwah, our righteousness. He is our righteousness. And when we aspire to obey his righteous Torah with all of our heart, mind and strength, then he considers us righteous. Not that we are righteous, but that he considers us righteous. So his eyes go to and fro looking for a right conscience, looking for a heart that's perfect towards him. Not someone that's perfect because we are not going to be perfect until he gathers us from the four corners of the earth. And then gives us a heart of flesh and then sprinkles clean water on us and removes the baalim from our lips. Not until then will we be perfect. Until then, we are to aspire to perfection with all of our heart, mind, and strength. And when we fall, in the words of Yahukun, uh, my dear children, I write to you so that you do not sin. But if anyone sin, we have a we have a mediator. We have a perfect offering. We have a perfect offering who mediates for us, whom we may go to, our high priest, and confess our sins with the offering of a broken and contrite heart. And his word declares that these he will not despise with confession and an offering and, 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 and with the belief in the offering of the body of the Hamashiach with with, with tears from my eyes that wet his feet and, and the hair that, that dries his feet. This he will not despise. We have a high priest that we can go to when we fail and when we stumble. He wants a perfect heart. He wants a right conscience towards him. Not someone who thinks that they're perfect. Not someone who trusts in their own righteousness, but someone who trusts in the righteousness of Yahuwah. That someone who understands that Torah is our righteousness, but with the right understanding that, yes, it is our righteousness, but Yahuwah only considers us righteous when we aspire to obey it with all of our heart, mind, and strength. With all of our my heart, mind, and strength. Nevertheless, it says, and that sown among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the worry of this age 
And that sown among thorns is he who hears the word, and the worry and the worry of this age and the deceit of riches choke the word, and it becomes fruitless. And that sown among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the worry of this age and the deceit of riches choke the word, and it becomes fruitless. And it becomes fruitless. You see, there, there's a constant war, Zion, going on in the nefash. There's a constant war going on in the nefash. We're constantly being tempted by what we see and what we hear and what we taste and what we say and, and uh, where we go. We are constantly being tested. We are constantly being tempted. Uh, we uh, want the things that we see. Uh, we want the things that we hear. We want the things that we taste. We want the things that we touch. We want uh, where our feet take us. We, we want to do those things. We, 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 our, our flesh wants to walk a path of unrighteousness. And this is constant, day in, day out. Constant day in and day out. And with many of us, we start out and these things, they become unbearable, unbearable because we don't spend enough time at the compassion seat because we don't spend enough time at the feet of Yah because we don't grasp that we do not serve a high priest, a Kohen Gadol, who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every point tempted as we are, yet he remained without sin. So let us now go boldly through to the throne of favor that we may receive pity, that we may receive compassion during our time of need. Not that we wait to go to the throne of compassion, when we have fallen, but we go to the throne of compassion when we are weak, when we are in jeopardy of being overcome by thorns, when we are being overcome by the deceitfulness of riches, that, uh, that uh, when we are being overcome by the worries and the desires of this lost, corrupt, wicked, nasty, deceitful world. That uh, we, instead of going to the throne of pity, that instead of going to the throne of compassion, when we have a weak moment before we fall, we wait till we fall before we go to the throne of compassion. Again, he forgives us if you go with the right conscience towards him with tears that are wetting his feet and hair that are, that are drying, <clears throat> the tears that you have put on his feet. But why wait? Why wait? Why wait? We gain strength when we go to the throne of compassion because he understands our weaknesses because he put on flesh and he dealt with the same temptations that we deal with. So go to him because he understands those weaknesses. He understands the temptations so that he can give us strength so that we don't fall into those temptations so that the thorns of this world do not choke out the word that he has planted in us that he has planted in us. And that sown on the good soil is he who hears the word and understands it, and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. And that sown on the good soil is he who hears the word and understands it. What is the word? The word has always been through the eye. Thy word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. The word has always been Torah. What word was Dawood talking about in Tahalim, Psalm 119th chapter, when he says, thy word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. You have to know the word to understand the word. You have to know the word to understand what Yahweh what, what Dawood was talking about there in Tahalim, the 119th chapter, and what Yahusha is talking about here. Thus, in the 17th chapter of Dabarim, of Deuteronomy, we understand that when a sovereign is chosen or was chosen in accordance with Torah, then that sovereign was to take a copy of the Torah from the Kohen 
and write a copy for himself and that he was to meditate on the Torah day and night so that he would not exalt himself above his brothers. So that he will not exalt himself above his, above his brothers. And so that the word would be hidden in his heart. And so that he would not sin against the Most High Yah. This is the word that, that Dawood is talking about. This is the light that, that uh, Shalumah, his son, tells us about. This is the word. And so many misunderstand the word because they don't. Uh, uh, misinterpret the word and obey the word incorrectly because they don't understand the word. They don't understand Torah. They don't understand Torah. And so again, correct understanding of the word, correct understanding of Torah generates correct obedience of the word Torah, which in turn uh, generates the right kind of fruit which in turn generates the right kind of fruit, the fruit of righteousness that leads to everlasting life. What is righteousness? Again, the word declares, Torah declares that Torah is righteousness for us when we're careful to obey it, when we are careful to obey it. So correct understanding of Torah uh, generates correct obedience which in turn generates the correct kind of fruit. A misunderstanding of Torah and someone who doesn't understand Torah will uh, misinterpret and misunderstand the words, not only the words of the Hamashiach, but the words of the apostles and the words of the Nabiim. He will misinterpret these words and then that would in turn generate the wrong kind of obedience and will in turn generate the wrong kind of fruit. The wrong kind of fruit. And these are the ones <clears throat> that are more likely than not when well, the word is thrown by the wayside and those demons come and snatch up the word. And these are the ones that uh, the seed is thrown on south shallow soil. And then when the sun comes up, we know that Shatan is worship as the sun. When the sun comes up, it, it, it burns it, it burns the planet, and it withers and go away. And, and those the seed is thrown amongst thrown amongst thorns, and then that it, it, it comes and it chokes it out. Those words and the carries of this deceitful material world that has been remade in the image of Hashatan comes and chokes it out, comes and chokes out the word. And the word says that those, those people, those people, even the little understanding that they think they have, is going to be taken away. It's going to be taken away. It's going to be taken so what's the right kind of soil? What is the right pH level? What is the right kind of soil? Let me say this to you. When a man is really, really, really hungry, the only thing he wants in the world at that moment is food. It's food. That's all he wants. He may have a love for silver and gold, the possessions of the world. He may have a love for women and sex and possessions and esteem. He may have a love for his wife and his children. But hear me, when he is really, really, really hungry, the only thing that matters to him in the whole world at that moment when he is hungry, when he's really hungry, is food to satisfy his hunger. Likewise, when a man is really thirsty to the point of almost dying of thirst, the only thing that matters to him in the whole world at that point is water to satisfy his thirst. It's water to satisfy his thirst. Likewise, Zion. If we don't hunger and thirst for Yahuwah in this way, 
if we don't hunger and thirst for his set apart word in this way, it's going to be thrown. The seed is going to be thrown by the wayside. The seed is going to be thrown on shallow ground. The seed is going to be thrown amongst thorns. Test your hunger. Test your hunger. Test your pH level. Test your hunger level. Again, do that introspective test. Test the soil. Test your hunger level. We need to, uh, this test needs to be consistently tested. It needs to be consistently tested. Because if there is not the right level of hunger, hear me, Zion. Hear me. Don't think more of yourself than you ought. If there's not the right level of hunger, then that seed is going to be thrown by the wayside. That seed is going to be thrown on shallow ground. That seed is going to be thrown amongst thorn. And even the understanding that you think you have is going to be taken away. It's going to be taken away. And you're going to become lukewarm. You're going to become lukewarm. You're going to become a mixture of hot and cold. Where when the Hamashiach returns, it's going to spew you out of his mouth. Test your hunger level. Test your hunger level. Again, if we don't hunger and thirst for Yahuwah in this way, who is righteousness, he is Yahuwah, Zevikinu, who is righteousness, we won't be filled by him. We won't be filled by his Ruach. We won't be filled by his word. His Ruach and his word are, are synonymous. He is the word. He is Ruach. He is Yahusha, who is the word. They are synonymous. There are no difference. They, they are Echad, Achad. So unless we hunger and thirst for righteousness, he will not fill us. He will not fill us with his word. He will not fill us with his Ruach. He will not fill us with righteousness. He will not fill us with himself. Again, he is righteousness. He is Yahuwah Zedekinu. His Torah is righteousness. Thus it is written, uh, Torah is righteousness for us when we are careful to obey it. He is Torah. He is righteousness and Zedekinu. If he isn't, hear me, Zion. If he isn't the only thing that matters to us in this whole world, in this whole world, if we are not willing to hate mother and father, and when I say hate, I don't mean hate literally. The, uh, the literal translation of that text is to love less, to love less, to love them less than him, to love them less than him. So, uh, reading that correctly if we don't love yahuwah more than mother a father a sister a brother a son a daughter or even our own life and the wicked things of this world if we are not willing to forsake all for him then we are not worthy to be his talmudim and he will not fill us. You have to have the right pH level. You have to have the right level of hunger. You have to have the right level of hunger. And you must understand that the enemy is coming at you irrespective of your hunger level. He is coming at you to test you. This is as written in the book of 2nd Edris or 2 Edris, this is the condition of the battle that's been given to us. This is the condition of the battle. He uses Hashatan to test us, to know what is in our heart, to know whether or not we will obey him. To him who overcomes will be given everlasting life. To him who does not overcome will be given everlasting death, everlasting torment. This is the condition of the battle that's been given to us. So understand, he's going to continue to come at you deceitfully, subtly, sometimes straight on. But understand that this is the condition of the battle. And so we must consistently test that pH level of our soil. We must con consistently test the hunger level of the soil. 
we must consistently test the hunger level of the soil. Test your soil on this day. Test the soil. Test the pH level of this soil, the soil of the heart, and make the determination of whether or not it is conducive for growing fruit, for receiving the receive, for receiving the seed. Because if it isn't, you're going to fall by the wayside. Uh, that seed is going to grow and wither because of the sun, and it's going to be choked out because of the worries of the world. Thus it is written in Matthew, Yahu, or Matthew, the fifth chapter, the sixth verse, by root are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And we just talked about hunger and we just talked about thirst. By root are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We just talked about righteousness. Yahuwah Zedekinu. Yahuwah is righteousness. Turah is righteousness for us when we are careful to obey it. It is the word. It is the word. It is Yahuwah. It is his very nature. It is his, it is his very character. It indeed is Yahuwah. And so when we are careful to obey it with all of our heart, mind, and strength, not that we are righteous, but he then considers us righteous because we aspire to obey his righteous to rise. And we have a right conscience towards him. By root are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Hear me, because they shall be filled. Because they shall be filled. Hunger. And thirst is the right pH level balance. You must have the right level of hunger and thirst in order to receive the engrafted seed so that it grows and so that it produces fruit. Test your hunger level. Test your thirst level. Test the pH level of your soil. I'll leave you with one, one final scripture text in Tahalim of Psalms, the 63rd chapter, the first verse. It reads, O Aluahim, O Aluah, you are my all. I earnestly seek you. Now, all here means mighty one. Mighty one. It is singular for Aluahim. It is all or Aluah. Uh, it means mighty one. So, in other words, you are my mighty one not God. You are my mighty one, not Theos or Dios, uh, not, not God, not the Babylonian deity of uh, sun deity of fortune and not Zeus because Zeus is Theos, Zeus is Dios. Um, Theos is named for Zeus. It is named for Zeus because all of the pantheon in the Greek pantheon, they come from Zeus. He is the creator G-O-D, they, they all come from him, thus they are all named after him. Do you hear me? They are all named after him, thus Theos comes from Zeus. Theos comes from Zeus, thus Dionysus, you know, Bacchus, uh, or uh, Adonis. Uh, these, these, these names all come from Zeus. They all come from Zeus, a Jesus, who some calls Jesus. They all, comes from, they all come from Zeus. And Zeus is Dios. He is God. He is God. God is also Wudan. God is also uh, Gudan. God is also the Babylonian deity of fortune. But we do not serve God. God is not a title. It's a, it's a name. We serve Yahuwah. Yahuwah, who is our all, who is our Alua, who is our mighty one. Our mighty one. So nevertheless, O oh, Alua, you are my all. I earnestly seek you. My being has thirsted for you. My flesh has longed for you in a dry and thirsty land without water. Unless we hunger and thirst for Yahuwah, we, not, we will not be filled with righteousness. We will not be filled. I pray that this has been a barakah. I pray that this has been edifying. I pray that this encourages someone. I pray that this causes someone to think. I pray that this encourages someone who's in a dry place, who uh, is in that place where you started off with much simca, which much what they call joy, and now it's kind of fading because 
you're 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 giving in to the pressures of um, the pressures of the testing. Um, you know, the test seems that it it just isn't going to end. The test seems like it just isn't going to go away. That uh, you're going to remain ill. That you're going to remain sick. That you're going to remain depressed. That you're going to remain heavy. That you're going to remain in this dry place. That you're going to remain lonely. That you're going to remain, you know, uh, unmarried or, or, or whatever the case may be. Whatever the case may be. Endure the test. Endure the test. And hunger and thirst for righteousness. What's more important to you? What's more important? What is more important? Ayub, a commonly called Job. You know, he, he utters the word, though he slay me, yet he will serve him. Though he slays me, yet he will serve him. So what, what's more important? What is more important to you? Test the pH level. Of your soil. Test the pH level of your soil. And I'm looking for that scripture in Job and Job and Ayub. Because I don't like misquoting anything. I don't like adding to or taking away from the word of Yah. Um, I don't like misquoting things though he slay me yet I will trust in him but I will but I will maintain my own ways before him though he slay me yet I will trust in him or yet I will serve him same thing yet I will serve him what's more important what's more important endure 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 check that pH level check your hunger and endure. Yahuwah barak you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yahuwah lift up his face toward you and give you shalom. Thus you shall put my name on the children, on the by name of Yahshua all, and I myself shall barak them. Amen. I mean, I mean.